Hey avant-garde gardeners, what's going on? It is I, your guy, the solar punk farmer, coming to you live from the Resilience Garden. Aquaponics is such an amazing and rewarding way to grow food. Once you experience the bounty of a productive aquaponics system, there is no turning back for you. Not like that's a bad thing though. But as I have said many times before, and as I'm sure you have heard if you are just beginning your explorations into aquaponics, Aquaponics is hard. The XP curve is quite steep, and learning how to properly care for an aquaponics system is a unique skill that can take time to gain levels in. Indeed, I've been practicing aquaponics for three years, and I am still gaining XP. However, through my experience as a professional aquaponics practitioner, I have seen pretty much all of the issues that an aquaponics system can be faced with. And that's what this video is about. My top five noob mistakes that you should avoid if you want to train and level up your aquaponics skills more quickly. In this video, I aim to identify some of the most common errors that newer practitioners make, explain why they are wrong, and tell you how to avoid them. Let's jump in. All right, here's number one, not fishless cycling your system. So I figured we would start off with, well, starting an aquaponics system off. I have seen tons of people across aquaponics forums and groups who have just built their system, filled it up with hose water, and then thrown fish in it. They are often dismayed to find that their ammonia and nitrite levels are through the roof and that their fish are dying left and right, and they're asking for help. My first question is, did you fishless cycle your system? And their answer is, of course, no. But Mr. Solar Punk Farmer, what is fishless cycling? Well, it turns out you can't just add fish to a new system and expect things to go smoothly. The nitrifying bacteria that support our fish exist all around us in the environment, but they have to make their way into your aquaponic system and set up shop before it can be a safe and healthy environment for the fish. The process of allowing these nitrifying bacteria to colonize a new system after introducing an ammonia source is called cycling. And I highly, highly, highly recommend cycling your system while there's no fish in it. Cycling your system without fish or fishless cycling typically takes anywhere between two weeks to two months. How long the process actually takes depends on environmental factors like water pH and water temperature and also whether or not you have taken the time to get yourself some water from an established aquaponic system that contains active microbial colonies and introduce it to your new system. There are a few key benefits to fishless cycling your system. Firstly, you can safely spike your system's ammonia levels using a concentrated source of ammonia, such as household liquid ammonia or ammonium chloride aquarium starch. Fishless cycling is typically performed with an initial ammonia concentration of three to four parts per million, a level which can be lethal to your fish. However, cycling a system with ammonia concentrations this high allows for a rather large and robust colony of nitrifying bacteria to get established fairly quickly. Doing things this way will make your system more prepared to receive fish when the time comes. And secondly, you won't kill your fish. Some people cycle their systems when it is stocked with a couple fish. The principle being to use the small amounts of ammonia that are excreted by these fish to stimulate microbial growth. While this can work, it is less effective and oftentimes comes at the cost of stressing out and killing the fish. This can lead to the proliferation of diseases, creating a dangerous environment for any more fish that you decide to add to the system after cycling is complete. Look, I know you're eager to get fish in your system and get things growing, but I highly advise against cycling your system with fish in it and jumping the gun like that. Patience is a virtue, especially when it comes to aquaponics. At the end of the day, it's simply not worth it. And now for new mistake number two, using improper materials when building your system. This is such an easy mistake to make that can result in headache after headache. Look, I know it may be tempting to cheap out on materials sometimes, especially if you are building a system on a budget, but believe me, a decision like that will cost you in the long run. You see, fish are sensitive creatures that are very easily injured or killed by any contaminants that are present in the water. And if the materials that you're using are not entirely fish safe, you can find that your fish are dying left and right for no apparent reason. Correcting a contamination issue like that could mean lots of troubleshooting and even ripping your system apart to replace the offending components. As a rule of thumb, there are two types of materials that you should avoid. Anything made out of metal and anything that is not certified Food grade. Wetted metal surfaces can corrode and release metallic cations into the water 
many of which are highly toxic to fish. For example, the copper and zinc found in brass fittings and galvanized steel can leach into the water and kill your fish even at very low concentrations. Generally speaking, you want to avoid allowing any kind of metal component to remain in contact with the water. When it comes to plastic components, food grade plastics are inherently fish safe. However, I would be wary of any used IBCs, plastic drums, or other containers that are food grade. Just because a used container is made out of food grade plastic, that does not mean that the material that it was used to store previously was fish safe by any means. Man, do I have a story to tell about that. One time, a couple of colleagues and I discovered that nicotine residues were actually leaching into an aquaponic system from a used food grade IBC that had previously been used to store vape juice for e-cigarettes. I mean, of course, since humans consume vape juice, it is regulated as a food grade product. However, nicotine is so toxic to fish that even trace amounts in the water could mean the end of them. Ultimately, we were only able to correct the issue after utterly tearing the system apart and replacing every single component that had ever come into contact with water. It was a very expensive, very time consuming, and very frustrating ordeal that I don't want to ever have to deal with again and that I don't want you to ever have to deal with. Additionally, I would make sure that you're just using the right kind of components in general and that they're high quality. Using things such as low quality and poorly fabricated plumbing components and cheap pumps can impair your system's functionality and lead to mechanical failures later down the line. The thing is, engineering problems resulting from a poor choice in components can affect your system for its entire operating life unless you can easily replace the offending components. The moral of the story is to always use materials and components that are right for the job. And now for mistake number three, overfeeding your fish. Overfeeding is something that I feel most aquaponics practitioners have done throughout their tenures, and I can definitely attest to this myself. Overfeeding can cause ammonia buildup in your system and may encourage the development of anaerobic dead zones that sap nitrate out of the water and release harmful compounds that can injure or kill your fish. I follow three guidelines when it comes to feeding my fish. Guideline number one is do not feed fish that have been newly introduced to an aquaponic system. They need some time to get settled into their new environment before you should feed them. This typically takes about two or three days. Secondly, do not feed fish that are stressed. And thirdly, only feed fish what they will eat in about 10 minutes. Anything less is underfeeding and anything more is overfeeding. Remember my budding aquaponics enthusiasts, only you can prevent overfeeding. And now for a bonus tip. Observing how enthusiastically your fish respond to food is an excellent way to gauge their stress levels. Provided other variables such as temperature that affect hunger levels are within range, fish that are stressed out are usually less inclined to eat their food. And now for mistake number four, failing to treat your top off water properly. I see questions about this particular subject being asked all the time. Many newer practitioners are also under the impression that they do not need to pH adjust their top off water before adding it to the system, or they're just really not sure how to go about doing that. Others don't realize just how effective chlorine and chloramine are at killing fish. And they either don't do enough or don't really do anything at all to treat their water to remove chlorine and chloramine before adding it to their system. Chlorinating agents can also harm the beneficial microbes in your system, leading to problems with cycling, nitrification, and mineralization. In general, I would say that the best way to go about treating your top off water if you have a small to medium sized system is to store it in a large drummer container in a sunny location under aeration for at least 48 hours before adding it to your system. Oxygen from the air and UV radiation in the sunlight will help to break down any chlorine containing compounds in the water. Storing the water in a container makes it easier for you to pH adjust the water before adding it to your system. You can also use fish safe chemical agents such as sodium thiosulfate, which is commonly used in aquariums, or ascorbic acid, which is also known as vitamin C, to break down any chlorinating agents that may be present in your source water. If you're topping off your system with municipal tap water or well water, there's a very good chance that your water has high alkalinity. Alkaline water has a high pH, sometimes even higher than eight, that is very resistant to being changed due to the presence of a buffer system in the water. A buffer system, in this case, is a complex of dissolved basic compounds that will resist any changes in pH. I recommend treating alkaline water with food grade phosphoric acid to neutralize the buffer system and bring the pH down 
to the appropriate level for your system. Phosphoric acid is great because it is a triprotic weak acid. Since it can donate up to three protons, it is able to form a robust acidic buffer system in the water that can help to stabilize pH. Just keep in mind that you may need to make multiple additions of phosphoric acid to your top off water in order to get the pH to the same level as that of your system. Very alkaline water has a tendency to neutralize any acids that are added to it up to a point and then increase in pH again. For medium to large size systems like mine right here, water hardness, chlorine compounds, and any other contaminants can be removed with a reverse osmosis filter that is fitted with a KDF-85 catalytic carbon pre-filter. One of the benefits of using an RO filter is that you can rig up an automatic top-off device, such as a float valve, so you don't actually need to manually fill up your system with new water at all. The major drawbacks of an RO filter is that they actually generate a pretty substantial volume of wastewater, which is wasteful and not exactly environmental friendly, although granted you can use this wastewater for other things like to water ornamental plants, that's what I do, so that it actually doesn't go to waste. And also you have to replace the filter cartridges periodically, typically every six months to a year. In short, treating your water to optimize pH and remove chlorine is an essential part of maintaining an aquaponic system properly. And the thing is, I have found that newer growers are just oftentimes not clued into this right away, and that's okay. But it's very easy to screw up your system if you're not treating your top off water properly, so please don't don't make this mistake. And now for the final new mistake I will be sharing with you all today, mistake number five, and that is neglecting to supplement. This is another extremely common mistake that I oftentimes see among newer practitioners. And I think this is because many newer practitioners have ventured into the world of aquaponics under the assumption that the plants can get all of the nutrients they need from the waste products of the fish. Clickbait articles and viral videos about aquaponics can oftentimes give off this impression because they oftentimes contain misinformation about the subjects. So honestly, it's understandable why somebody would make this assumption, but it's simply not the case. Certain chemical elements that plants require, namely iron and potassium, are limiting in aquaponic systems and need to be supplemented, albeit in small amounts. Liquid seaweed extract is an excellent biologically derived high potassium fertilizer that also contains a number of beneficial compounds that help to improve overall plant health. Iron DTPA is a cheap and non-toxic form of chelated iron that works well in water with a pH of up to 7. You can also use iron EDDHA, which is another non-toxic and effective iron chelate that works in water with a pH of up to 9. However, iron EDDHA is a bit more expensive and it also tends to dye the water a dark red color, which reduces visibility and makes it hard to see your fish. You may also find that depending on what you're growing, other nutrients such as phosphorus, magnesium, and trace minerals are also limiting in your aquaponic system. These can be supplemented as well if necessary. Additionally, installing a mineralization tank in your aquaponic system will allow for the complete breakdown of fish waste, which will greatly reduce the need for supplementing in general. If there is any interest, I can share my full supplementation regimen in another video. If you would like to see that, please go ahead and tell me in the comments below. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode of the Solar Punk Farmer. I hope you found this video informative and useful, and I hope you're able to get a little bit of bonus XP out of it. If you can think of any other common noob mistakes that you have made or have seen others make, feel free to share them in the comments below. Also, don't forget that I am on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My links are right up there if you wanna give me a follow or like. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on the bell icon below so that you can receive notifications when I post future videos. See you all next time.